Astro Pixel Processor has one of the best tools for creating multiple image mosaics. For this video, I'll be using some data I shot using the Telescope Live Chile 4 telescope, a 20 inch fast reflector located in Chile. The target was the wonderful IC2118, or to give it its popular name, the Witch Head Nebula. This is a large reflection nebula located in the constellation of Eridanus. It's a nebula that is being illuminated by the bright star Rigel in the nearby constellation of Orion. The Chile 4 telescope has a very large field of view, but the Witch Head Nebula is such a large object I had to take two sets of sub-exposures carefully pointing the telescope to allow an overlap between the two sets of panes. The Witch Head Nebula is best imaged using LRGB filters. In this video, I'll create a two-pane mosaic using APP's Mosaic tool. Initially, we'll use APP's automatic mode and then we'll look more closely at the fine-tuning parameters that can be employed to improve the end result. We'll start off by combining a small data set taken with a luminance filter from both panes to test the procedure. Here they are down in the far list window. I'll open one image from each pane so we can see how they look. When creating mosaic images, I find it best to work through the individual buttons contained in the default menu. As these images have already been calibrated by Telescope Live, we can ignore the first two buttons and go straight to number three, Analyze Stars. This is a simple menu and initially I will leave it on this default setting of 500 and click on the Analyze Stars button. After a short period of time, APP has finished the processing, so we'll now move on to the number four button, Register. This menu contains a lot more options, but for now we'll leave them on the default settings with one important exception, and this is to change the Registration Mode option to Mosaic, and click on the Start Registration button. APP has alerted us to some potential problems, but will walk us through possible solutions. I'm not going to disable the same camera and optics option, so we'll select no for now. Next, we are alerted to a possible problem with the scale stop values. Let's let APP increase the scale stop values for us, so we'll click yes. The next option is for APP to turn on the dynamic distortion correction for us, so we'll click yes again. Uh oh, the star registration has failed. So let's try and work through some of these solutions by initially going back to the analyze stars menu and increasing the star detection value to 1400. Click on the Analyze Stars button again. So far so good. Now it's back into the Register menu and press Start Registration. Another failure. OK, this time I'll try turning off the same camera and optics option and see if that makes any difference. Although these of course were the same when the data was taken. After a short time, APP has completed this step. Next, it's into the Normalize menu. I'll leave everything here set on default and click the Normalize Light button. Once completed, we can go into the Integrate menu. Again, I'll leave the default settings and press the Integrate button. We'll be prompted for a file name, so I'll use WHNEB. Click OK. This procedure will take a while, so I'll fast forward the video. And here's the end result. Zooming in, we can see that Astro Pixel Processor has done a very good job combining the two panes. There is a slight mismatch where the panes are joined, so let's try tweaking some of the settings 
in the integrate menu to see if we can improve this. And remember, we're working with a very small data set at this point. I'll start off by disabling the automatic integrate option and change the setting to median. This is because we'll be working with a fairly small data set through each of the filters. If working with lots of sub-exposures, this should be set to average. Next, for the filter option, I'll choose Windsorized Rejection and tick the Local Normalization Rejection box. Further down, turn on LNC Degree to Second Degree LNC and change the LNC Iterations option to 4. Now turn on Enable MBB and leave the default setting on 5. MBB stands for multi-band blending and will help fill in areas that may have been degraded by, for example, dithering between exposures. I'll leave everything else on the default settings and click on the integrate button again. OK, APP is asking if we want to apply an LNC effect to the data. As we've already done this correction, I'll click no. We'll be prompted for a file name, so I'll use WHNEB and click OK. I'll fast forward the video again. And here's the result. Yes, I'm zooming in, there's definitely an improvement, especially where the two panes blend together. OK, the next step is to take a deep breath and load all of the individual LRGB files. Let's run through the procedure again and see what happens, starting with the Analyze Stars menu. Next, into the Register menu. All of these parameters are the same as before, so I'll click on Start Registration. Now this will definitely take a while, so I'll jump forwards in the video again. Once completed, we can go to the Normalize menu and click on the Normalize Lights button, and this won't take long to complete. Finally, into the Integrate menu, and from the Multi-Channel Filter drop list, I'll select Integrate Per Channel and All, so APP will create a superluminance frame from all the LRGB data. Now click on the Integrate button, click on No again to cancel the second application of LNC, choose a file name if necessary, and click OK. OK, the procedure has completed and we can see the first of the mosaic images. The file list window shows the rest of the new mosaic images. To conclude this section, I'll create an LRGB image using our newly compiled mosaic frames. Click on the Tools tab and then again on the Combine RGB button. Now click on the Add Channel button to open the LRGB master images. Make sure that LRGB1 is the chosen composite formula and click OK every time a file is shown in the menu. Now click on the Calculate button to produce the LRGB image. OK, here's the image. It's looking a bit neutral at the moment, but that can be addressed later. All we're interested in at this point is to see how well the mosaic tool has performed. I'll zoom in so we can see the area where the panes overlap. But looking at this image, to be honest, I can't actually see any overlap artifacts, so top marks to Astro Pixel Processor. To save the image, click on the Save button and then click on OK if you're happy with the parameters in the menu.